So welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now answering a paper from the International GCSE, IGCSE Cambridge collection of the 0580 syllabus. This is a paper for variant two from October 2021. And I'm going to be answering this paper by doing questions um, topic by topic. So um, when a question comes and, um, you know, so on a particular topic, I will make one video on that. And then if another part of the question or a different question is on a different topic, I will make a new video on that topic so I can separate all these videos according to the playlist on the paper. This paper will collect in one playlist. And I can also add those topics to the other playlists I have, which are topic by topic um, playlists. So now um, I'm going to start with question number one, which is about ratios. Normally, in most of the papers, the first questions are normally arithmetic type of questions, um, pro pro ratio, proportion, uh, percentages, and so on. So this is like a, one of those arithmetic questions about ratios. It says, Melina has 450 fruit trees. The fruit trees are in the ratio apple to pear, sorry, ratio apple to pear to plum, 8 to 73. Okay, so you have apple, 8 parts, pear, 3 parts, 7 parts, and plum, 3 parts. Show that Melina has 200 apple trees. Okay, so there's 450 trees, and they're split, us, they're split up into this ratio. So what we need to do is we need to find out the total number of parts of this ratio. So you have eight parts for the apple, plus seven parts for the pears, plus three parts for the plums. That gives you uh, 18 parts. So there's 18 parts in total. And the apple trees make up eight parts out of that 18. So the fraction of the apple apple trees out of the t total is 8 out of 18. So 8 out of 18 times 450, that will give you the total number of apple trees. Okay, that's um, one way of doing this question. Okay, so 18 out of eight, 8 of 18 times 450. So 8 of 18 multiplied by 450, and that should give us 200. Yes, it does. Okay, that's equal to 200 trees. So here it says you have to show that she has 800, uh, has 200 apple trees, and that's how you can show it. There's also all alternative ways of doing it. You could say, okay, there's 450 trees divided into 18 parts. So you do 450 divided by 18, which gives you 25. So 25 trees for each part. So therefore, the apple trees are going to be... Um, 8 times 25, which gives you 200 trees. That's another way of doing it. Okay, there's also a visual way of doing it where you make 8 boxes, 7 boxes, 3 boxes, and in the altogether there's 18 boxes, and 450 divided by 18 means each box has to have 25 in it, and therefore you've got 8 boxes, make up 200 trees, 8 times 25. It's very similar to this method, but just drawing the boxes. That's kind of like a more of a visual way. Anyway, then it says find the number of plum trees. Well, we can do it either way as well. Plum trees make up three parts out of 18 of 450. Or you can say the plum trees are three times 25 because it's three parts out of um, the 18 parts. So each part is worth 25. So three times 25 is 75. So you can say 75 trees. You can put 75 here. That's, that's what that's going to give you. Okay, um, you can confirm that if you want. Just do three divided by 18 times 450. That gives you 75 trees. All right, then it says, Melina wants to increase the number of pear trees by 32%. Calculate the number of extra pear trees she needs. Okay, so first we've got to work out the number of pear trees, which is going to be 7 times 25. Or you can say 450 take away 200 take away 75. In either case, whichever way you do it, you can say first you've got to find the number of pear trees that she has already. So the pear trees that she has is, you can say, 25 times 7. Okay, so you can do it that way. 25 times 7 gives that 7 parts. That gives you 175. And you can just confirm that you haven't made a mistake by adding 175 and 75 and 200 and making sure that we get 450. Yeah, that's right. So it must be 175 left. Now, she wants to increase the number of pear trees by 32%. Now, the question here says calculate the number of extra pear trees she wants. So they're not asking you to find the increased amount, just 
the extra amount. So you have to just find 32% of 175. So it's 0 0.32 or 32 over 100 times 175. And that will give us the answer. Okay, because they're not asking for the increased amount, just the extra amount. So you've got to be very careful about this question because in most cases, that's going to be 100, that's going to be 56 trees. Okay, in most cases, they're asking you, and when it says so you want to increase the number of something, then you have to multiply it by 1.32 if you increase it. Okay, 1.32, that will give you the new amount, including the extra amount. But here they just want the extra amount. You can see if we just subtract the original amount from this, that will give you 56. So they only want the extra amount. So sometimes somebody might read the question. It's very common. He wants to increase the number of pear trees by 30%. Oh, we have to increase it by 32%. And they'll say 1.32 times 175, and they'll get the wrong answer. Okay? You, you must read all the words of the question. Calculate the number of extra pear trees she needs. Okay, very important for you to understand that. That would probably be a very common mistake in this paper. I'm sure that the examiner's report would have mentioned that. Now, now part four, it says each apple tree produces 48.5 kilograms of apples. The apples have an average mass of 165 grams each. Calculate the total number of apples produced by the 200 trees. Give your answer correct to the nearest 1,000 apples. Okay, so each tree produces 48.5 kilograms of apples. The apples have an average mass of 165 grams each. Calculate the total number of apples produced by 200 trees. So if you have 200 trees... And each of them produce 48.5 kilograms of apples. If you multiply 200 by 48.5, that will give you the total number of apples, uh, total number of kilograms produced, kilograms of apples produced by the tree. Okay, so you have 200 multiplied by 48.5. That gives you 9,700 kilograms. So you have 9,700 kilograms of apples and one apple you can say the average mass of each apple is 165 grams so that's 165 grams per apple for one apple so we want to find the number of apples so if we divide 9700 kilograms and um, but change it into grams first so that we can have these as compatible kilograms divided by Grams won't work. Kilograms divided by kilograms would work. Or you could say um, grams divided by grams would work. So I could change this. I could even do it the other way around. I could change this into, into kilograms. I could say that's going to be 0 0.165 kilograms even. That's fine. I have to write less zeros then. So 0 0.165. That's changing this into kilograms. So this is 0 0.165 divided by 1,000. That's kilograms for each apple. Okay, that's how many kilograms each apple weighs. If I divide the number of kilograms by the um, mass per kilogram, it will give me the number of apples. That will be the number of apples. You've got, you can think of it as kilograms divided by, um, you can say divided by kilograms per apple. So you have kilograms times apple over kilograms and the kilograms cancel out, you're left with the number of apples. You can think of it like that if you want, by looking at the units of what you're, what you're getting. Okay, so we have 9,700 divided by 0 0.165. Okay, which gives us 587, 87.87. This is like a recurring decimal. 587, 87.87 continues on. Correct to the nearest 1,000 apples. So this is the nearest thousand, so it's going to be 59,000 apples. Okay, so that's the number of apples produced by the 200 trees um, altogether. So that's part four of this question. Um, now, continuing on with the next part of this question, it's still an arithmetic type of question. It says, write this number in figures. It says, Millennia's land is valued at $3,075,000. So three million and seventy five thousand. so that's... Zero hundred thousands, seventy-five thousand. So it's like this: three million and seventy-five thousand dollars. Okay. Write your answer to P Part One in standard form. So standard form, there should be one digit before the decimal point, then a decimal point, 
and any numbers that are not zero after it should be written until the last non-zero number until the last zero number sorry so you're gonna have 3.075 multiplied by 10 to the power of well we put the decimal point here initially it was over there so how do we get it back again one two three four five six ten to the power of six that's the answer for b part two which is about standard form now for part c it says in 2020 each plum tree produced 37.7 kilograms of plums this was 16 percent more than in 2019 calculate the mass of plums produced by each plum tree in 2019 so we have 2019 and we have 2020 which comes after it in 2020 the mass was 37.7 kilograms okay and that was 16 percent more than 2019 i'm going to call this x that's how much we have to find how much was produced in 2019 now the original amount we call 100 percent that's how much was produced originally and in the next year there was 16 percent more produced so this is going to be 116 percent 100 percent plus it says more so it's going to be 100 percent plus 16 percent that gives us 116 percent so to find what x is i can just cross multiply i have 37.7 times 100 divided by 116 and we can just put that in the calculator and get the answer so you have 37.7 times 100 divided by 116 and that gives us 65.2 which is 32.5 kilograms okay so there's the answer to that you can also do it in another way you can say all right we know that uh, there's x produced in 19 2019 and when that x was increased by 60 percent so when, if you multiply it by 1.16 that's like 100 percent plus 60 percent which gives us 116 percent which is has a decimal 1.16 that when you multiply x by 1.16 you end up with the 37.7 kilograms so what we can do is you can do x equals 37.7 over 1.16 which gives us the same answer that's another way of doing it I, I like this this is like the before and after method i call it all right now part d says melina invests 1800 dollars at a rate of 2.1 percent per year compound interest okay calculate the value of investment at the end of 15 years so this is compound interest not simple interest so don't make the mistake of saying prt over 100 and then adding that to 1800 that would be for simple interest this is compound interest so the amount at the end of each year keeps being raised by 2.1 percent for 15 years so there's a formula that most people would use which is the value of the investment is the the principal which is the amount that's invested times 1 plus r over 100 and r being the rate which is 2.1 to the power of n which is the number of years okay which works out to take give you 1800 times and the you know this is exactly what i just did up here in the increase what i did here 1.16 the same thing this is what exactly what's going to get here this is like 100 percent plus 2.1 percent which is 102.1 percent which is 1.021 that's what this is going to give you when you do 1 plus 2.1 over 100, you're going to get 1.021. Okay, that's what this is. It's basically increasing this amount by 2.1%, but not once. How many times? 15 times. It's going to increase 15 times. So you have to put to the power of 15. So you basically end up with this. You have 1,800. 1,800 times this will give you 1.021 to the power of 15. And that will give you the new investment. It says the value of investment. That's the total new value of the investment, which is 2,458.434. So it's 2,458.43 continues on like this. Now, to give the answer for this, all right, the front of the paper says all non-exact answers should give, be given to 3SF. So you could give this as 2,460 to 3SF, $2,460. That would be 3SF. Okay, it's not an exact answer. So you should round it to 3SF. However, with currency, you, could, you should think also about two decimal places. So this and this would both be acceptable in this question. The front of the paper, it says all non-exact answers should be given to two to 3SF 
but I goes to one decimal place. It doesn't mention currency, but in general, currency, um, you know, should be given to two decimal places if it's not an integer. So if you write this as your answer, or if you write this as your answer, both will be correct. This is the answer to three significant figures, 2,460, okay? And this is the answer to two decimal places because it's currency. So both of them should be acceptable to the examiner. Okay, so there's the answer for part D. And that completes question number one, which is all about basic arithmetic, percentages, ratios, um, standard form, a bit of standard form in there. Okay, and that's the answer to that question. Um, as I said, other questions from this paper will be found in the playlist that should appear over here. Other questions to do with basic arithmetic can be found in the playlist that should appear somewhere in this region. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.